Hey Jen, it's me, Jeremy, and uh, I'm making this video for you, um, just as a way to basically remember me and us and most of, well, everything that went along with it. It's tough to know where to start. But, I guess I'll start with me. So, Jeremy, Jeremy Stephen Gilbert. I was born May 8th, 1979 in Houston, Texas. Um, lived between Houston and the Dallas area, but been in Garland for most of my life. And, uh, in Garland High School, I met you for the first time when our teacher paired us together in German class. She paired us together in the computer lab. And you also sat right in front of me in class, and uh, after the computer lab, we started talking, and uh, yeah, it was cool. We had a, didn't have a lot of friends, so yeah, it was. It was cool to have someone to talk to, even though the teacher ultimately would not want me talking so much, but that was that was a bite on her ass for trying to get me to talk in the first place. But I digress. Yeah, and I, I often look back at those years just thinking how crazy that that's where it all started. I had no idea that time where it would all lead to. I just thought you you were this cool girl that sat in front of me that drew really cool pictures and I really did like your artwork. It was very very clean and and I would say professional looking as opposed to mine which was always sketchy looking. But uh yeah and uh I was bummed out when when uh, the next semester you weren't in my class anymore. But, uh, but I, I was rather amazed when I found out that you were actually going out with one of my other friends that I'd met completely separate. That was Daniel Jefferson. So I still saw you from time to time and then uh, occasionally you'd pop up into my class or my classes and uh, yeah, and that was always pretty cool because then you'd hang out with me and yeah, we'd have a good time. And uh, yeah, that was that was fun. And, uh, but then uh, I guess you got you got kicked out of school. Um, well, maybe I'm jumping ahead a little too far because I'm not. I'm having a hard time remembering the chronology myself, but I remember in summer of 1997, I guess you and Daniel had already broken up at this point, but the, the finer nuances of relationships often escaped me, so I invited you both out to Rockfest with me to have a good time, and we went, and for the most part we had a good time, and then you... you, you uh, went off and then Daniel moved all our stuff and you had no idea how to find us and we couldn't find you and so he ended up having to get separate rides home and yeah that was kind of a nightmare and I'm glad you were okay <laughs> and yeah I guess you were going out with Randy at that time or starting to because he was pissed off at Daniel but uh So that, because that's how I think how I found out you were going out with Randy, and then uh, I had met Randy through my brother at school, and then uh, and then yeah, both of you, Randy and and you, got kicked out of school, and so I didn't know if I was ever gonna see you again, but I had lost so many people in my life by that point. I mean, it was kind of par for the course. I had moved around a lot, so 
I was used to people just kind of coming and going out of my life. And as far as I knew, this was another one of those instances. But uh, a month or two after I graduated, uh, Randy called me wanting to join his band. And uh, yeah, I came over and hang out at, at your mom's house. And yeah, that was pretty cool. And uh, oh yeah, I'd, I'd also hear about you from, from my brother before when I was still in school because he would skip and go to your house and of course barf all over your stuff and whatnot. Because uh, yeah, <laughs> drugs and everything. So yeah, I'd still hear about you and stuff. So that was kind of cool how you were kind of still there, even on the periphery, but, uh, but yeah, Randy asked me to join the band after I graduated, so I wanted to be a musician, and that was, you know, he was someone who was eager to start trying to do something, and I was wholeheartedly a part of that, so, so I jumped on board, and, uh, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised, too find out it would be at your place or your mom's place rather so so yeah we started practicing over there and that's where I first met your dad which I would later find out was not who he uh, he was not who he presented presented himself to be a lot of stuff going on there and uh, I know he had a lot of big ideas for the band or bands he wanted to have two bands us and them because because originality I guess was not one of his strengths but we jammed we played it didn't go anywhere and then after a couple months of that y'all just disappeared he just took y'all down to South Texas and that was that and I once again thought all right well they're gone and I guess I'm not going to see them again and, um, gosh, I think it was several months later, several months later when Brian, your brother, called me with, uh, one of the guys we had been playing in the band with, with Randy and your dad. It was, uh, his name's Jason, I think. And, uh, so we got together with him to jam over at your mom's place and one of the times we were over there I think we only played like twice together but when we went over there to your mom's house you and Randy were up visiting from South Texas so that was hey, another surprise you popped back up again and you had little baby Jamie with you and that was the first time I'd seen her and uh yeah, it was cool, even though it was brief, and once that was done, I didn't see you again for, for quite some time, I think, maybe another year, or, yeah, or not quite another year, but just about, because, y'all, yeah, the next time I saw you was in, I want to say February, January or February of... 2000 when my parents were away and y'all showed up at my doorstep y'all had escaped from your father in in South Texas and uh, y'all came and hung out over at my place for a couple days while my parents were gone even though yeah that was kind of breaking the rules of my house because my parents had specifically said no visitors and I broke that rule but but I made an exception because I hadn't seen y'all in some time and I was glad to see y'all. So yeah, we hung out and caught up and y'all kind of told me everything that had been going on and how y'all had managed to escape your father with, with your cousin's help. And uh, yeah, and from that point, y'all were pretty much a, a fixture in my life. Uh, I know um, I went to Jamie's first birthday party and, uh, you know, I helped Randy get a job at Office Depot and, you know, we hung out and we, we started getting the band stuff back together again and jamming. And 
it was fun and then after a few months of that in July we basically just dropped everything and moved to Florida and that was right after Jesse was born because when you came back from Florida you were or not when you not Florida sorry when you came back from South Texas you were pregnant with Jesse and so she was born in June and we went in July to Florida and yeah that was hell from the from the get-go everything everything that could go wrong did um, I know you had to go separately you had to take a bus with with little Jamie and Jesse and the conditions were nightmarish just getting through the bus terminals especially in Houston uh, with all the crowded people and overheating and splattered horses and <laughs> all sorts of fun stuff happened in your your bus trip and uh, we took a we took a van that you had bought for Randy that didn't survive the trip unfortunately um, and neither did, uh, did, did the rat, your pet rat that we brought, rat brain. Yeah, that was just no good. Pretty much messed up trip all the way around. And we got there and we were stuck with, with uh, Jesse Bowman and his then wife, Star, and their daughter, Saif. And, Jesse and Star were pretty much awful to us for the month that we were there. Um, so we quickly got a place of our own, an apartment of our own, and things kind of settled down. It was dramatic. Um, I was getting accustomed to living with roommates after living with a relatively peaceful family. Getting to hear you and Randy go at it at times was rather rather jarring and yeah but it was it was what it was and uh, other than that you know it was it was definitely a learning experience um, all the all the pride I had built up at Office Depot at being a efficient work, worker was was beat down quickly by a telemarketing job and then Office Max, where we were basically scapegoated. And after that, it was McDonald's, which was a very harsh lesson in, in shitty jobs. But yeah, that was that was definitely a learning experience. And, uh, I definitely had a lot to learn there, uh, as far as coming out of my shell. But after about a year, we were kind of calling it quits. But uh, that's when we first got together. You and me really, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we had our first start, start um, what's the word I would best describe it as? Um, romantic feelings for each other. Um, definitely a stronger interest than before. And, uh, we started having a relationship and and uh, you told Randy about it and he wasn't happy about it at first but he was he was pretty accepting of it and you know we we tried to make the best of it and um, I started smoking marijuana at that time with y'all and uh, yeah that had that was a very interesting time in my life, and uh, I would definitely say marijuana broke a lot of the bounds on my mind and expanded my thinking considerably and made me think outside that little box I'd been living in for most of my life. So it did bring its share of of, in, of troubles in the in the years to come, but at that time it was. I would say it was a good thing that I that I did it. But we came back to we came back to Texas, and uh, I wish things had gone better. But but 
uh, I broke it off shortly after we got back. I broke off our relationship and I didn't do it in a good way and, and I hurt you and I was trying to do it and for some reason to protect you and to sort of keep a peace overall but I did it wrong and made things worse and uh, yeah you were pretty upset with me pretty resentful understandably and uh, really didn't want to live with me but we did end up living together anyway we moved into an apartment and we, we tried to keep things going as well as possible and you know our, our, we, we kind of got back together but then I broke it off again and yeah, that time I tried to break it off for good, but again, I didn't. I didn't do it in a good way, and yeah, in fact, I probably did it in pretty bad ways and messed things up. Uh, and then we were forced to move out of that apartment to another one. We we stayed in that new apartment for about a year before before Emily was born, and. Uh, then CPS got involved in our lives and tore everything apart and you and Randy ended up moving into an apartment and I went back with my parents and stayed there for a while and uh, at least the better part of 2003 but at the, near the end of 2003 we once again against against your uh, your wishes we all moved together again into a house in North Garland and uh, you got your kids back, and yeah, we were all living together again. We lived there for about a year, and then we moved to a house on Castle for about another year, and then uh, things once again fell apart because you and Randy were having troubles, and you went to live with your mom. You took the kids and went to live with your mom, uh, the landlord kicked us out of the house because it looked like crap. And, uh, so I, and I was back with my parents again. And that time I lived with my parents for a couple years, a couple years. Um, the rest of 2005 throughout 2006 and the first half of 2007. And uh, I started visiting pretty regularly, uh, and it, it eventually I can't even remember when, but eventually it became to a you know basically a weekly visit. Um, I ha I would have days off, so I would I think I had two days off in a row, so I'd just spend most of my time over there when I was off work, or at least on the weekends, my weekends, which were Tuesdays and Wednesdays, because they were also band practice days. But, uh, and then in 2007, I moved in with Randy, and I think, and Brian, I moved in with Randy and Brian to an apartment, and that's, about that time was when CPS was getting involved because your, um, uh, your mom's ex, David, was causing trouble. So he just called, he called CPS to be malicious and you were worried and uh, you had to, you had Jamie, Jesse and Emily go stay with uh, your cousin in Colorado and uh, they stayed there for a few months I believe until they came back and nothing really came of the CPS case so that was good. But uh. 2008 I moved back in with my parents and uh, we kept trying to go with the band thing and uh, I was visiting pretty often and pretty much on and off since I had broke up you were trying to you were trying to make the best of it but you still had feelings for me and you still wanted to to try to get our relationship going 
and uh, I kept pushing you away, kept pushing you away for various reasons. Uh, I wanted, I still believed, possibly deludingly so, that you and Randy could salvage your own relationship despite the uh, vol volatile chemistry. And, uh, and there was other reasons too that I, that I was trying to protect you from and I will get into that in a little while. Uh, but you were also writing music to express your feelings and I think that was good that you were doing that. You started actually learning guitar shortly after I did. Um, so if I backtrack a little bit after uh, in 2003 when we moved into that house together after you got your kids back from CPS um, I had started learning guitar while I was with my parents and then you started learning guitar while we were in that house and um, one of our roommates was George Chapin and uh, he was a really good guitarist and uh, I think he uh, he gave us both a lot of uh, get information on playing the guitar and uh, so yeah you were writing your own songs to, to deal with these feelings and they were very personal songs and they were very um, very real songs they were they related very much to the things that had happened in your life and uh, yeah they uh, some were directed at Randy and some were directed at me and and uh, yeah Sometimes it was hard to hear because, yeah, I knew it. it. It was dredging up pain that I had caused, and yeah, it wasn't a pleasant thing to face. And uh, you wanted to, you you did want to try to rekindle things and try to get back with me, and I kept pushing you away, and never in the best way because because uh, tact was never my strong suit. But uh, in 2009, things were really not going well between you and Randy. And uh, at one point, early in 2009, he had basically stated that he was going to break things off with you. And he actually encouraged me to go after you, and I told him I, I really didn't want to do anything like that because it really wasn't my place. And um, a few months later, we actually did start doing stuff, and uh, not anything like, well, I mean, it was pretty serious, but it wasn't official. And uh, in some ways, I still kept pushing but in 2010 is when it all fell apart because at that point he had decided that he wanted to give things another shot with you but he had pretty much caused so much grief by that point that you no longer decided you wanted to be with him and all sorts of other things were going on um and things pretty much just blew up but in that part of that was that we got together um, I finally decided that yes it was probably uh, it probably was my place to get with you because I did care for you and all I had ever done was was hurt you and I did love you and I do love you and I was done basically waffling between one side or the other and I decided that that was going to be it. We were going to get together and I was going to try to make things right. If if possible, I would try to make things right. And so, and at that time, Don Hightower, who was a school friend of yours and Randy, had come back into our lives and he was adding to the drama by by uh,
pushing himself very heavily upon Jesse and um, while I don't believe anything actually happened it definitely appeared that things were heading in that way and it was setting off certain alarms in my head uh, for reasons that again I will touch on in a bit um, but uh you didn't really see it at the time and Randy didn't see it and I was I was very very vocally and once again badly expressing my concerns and while we did finally get Don out of our lives once he revealed himself as a um, as a backstabber by trying to sabotage you um, I had done enough damage myself by that point to have basically caused a rift between me and Jesse and yeah and but we tried to make it anyway we, we limped along we at pretty much shortly after that your mom made me leave because I didn't have a job at the time because I had only been temping at Thompson Reuters at that time and then I failed a drug test and I couldn't go back to temp for them so at least not for a year so I went I had to leave your mom made me leave until I could get a job so I spent the next month or two working on getting a job and I ended up working for UPS and after a few months there I did get a car and as soon as soon the the day I had my car I drove over and moved in to your mother's house with you and and um and then uh, we we've lived together ever since um we spent we spent a couple years for, together at your mom's I know beginning of 11 the beginning of 2011 till nearly the end of 2012 and in 2012 Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what caused it, but I think I think your ex stepfather David was I think he was threatening CPS stuff again. I can't remember exactly, but we ended up moving out of your mom's. Um, well, maybe we had just been trying to move. I can't remember, but we did just we ended up moving to a house on Milky Way and it was really a not a good house it was a it was had all sorts of plumbing issues electrical issues but we tried to make it home and uh, we lived there through through most of 2013 and uh, yeah, we just tried to make the best of it wasn't always the best place but and I know Randy was living with us for at least part of that or most of that and then uh, he went and got his own apartment eventually but he had some fallout with a bad relationship in which that lady decided to call CPS on us and basically CPS showing up at our door triggered your your fear response and you left with the kids and and uh yeah that wasn't a good experience so that was actually the second time so the first time we did move in 2012 because of cps um because that was the first time you you took off with, with the kids and uh and i i was in such a haste to skip over living at your mother's house that I forgot one very important detail um, that actually I've skipped over a couple details because uh, well, obviously Kaylin was born in 2006 I wasn't living with you at that time that was pretty shortly after we had had stopped living together in the house on Castle and you were uh, you were you had just started living with your mom you were already pregnant with Kaylin at that time and uh, so yeah, you had Kaylin there, and then uh, 
in 2012, while I, well, 2011, while we were while I was working at UPS, we we decided we were going to try to have a child, and it was it was we had to go at it for a while, but eventually you did get pregnant, and and Elena was born in 2012. Um, yeah, the whole pregnancy we thought it was going to be a boy, and then uh, yeah, surprise, it ended up being a girl, and my daughter was born, and. And that, yeah, and then, uh, and then later in 2012, around the fall, your your ex stepdad called. I don't even know if you consider him your stepdad, whatever. David called CPS, and so you you took off, and you were staying with Randy, I believe. Yes, yeah, you were staying in some apartments with Randy, um, and. Uh, yeah, it was hard. I didn't take it well because suddenly I was alone, even though I wasn't in the house alone. I mean, your mother and Richard were there, but I didn't really consider them family or companions or friends or anything of that sort. And it was hard. And that was, once again, me handling a situation in the worst way possible because all I knew that I was, I was hurt and missing you and wanting to be with you and yet there was other obligations I had that meant I couldn't just up and leave all our stuff and just go stay in hiding with you. So we, so we did, we got, we moved, we, we moved out of your mom's house, we got that house on. Milky Way. That's why we moved to Milky Way. And we moved in. Randy moved in because he lost his apartment. And we we all lived there. Um, but then he moved out. He got it. Uh, why did he move out? Oh, yeah, he just wanted to get his own thing going. But uh, I think he was, I can't remember where he was actually staying, but I know he was staying with John Dobbins when uh or maybe I can't remember sorry the details kind of get lost on me but CPS showed up again at our house at the end of uh, in uh, August of 2013 I think and yeah and and you left you went over you took the kids and and hid at John Dobbins house and once again, I didn't treat it very well. I once again felt like you had just left, up and left me. And here I was with a house full of stuff and no people in it. And I missed my family and 